Welcome back. We've got another Cricut Design Space tutorial for you. We've got a nice sweet and short one today and we're going to dive straight into it. Let's go. Hello there. So we are going to talk all about colors in Cricut Design Space today. This is a bit of a bigger topic because colors don't just mean colors. Of course, it means colors by itself, but it's a bit bigger than that. That's what I mean. So what I want to do is I've got a really beautiful, cute, multi-layered design in front of me. I'm working on page 31 if you have our Cricut Design Space book and you can find the hashtag number for this gorgeous teddy bear if you would wish one to work with the same image. Now, what we're going to have a look at is I want to show you how to change some of the colors on this image. The reason why I would want to change the colors is because it gives me a visual representation of what this image is going to look like. So currently, this image is a cut image. You can have a look at the layers panel here on the right and see that it's going to cut all of the elements. It's not a printable image. So the fact that I'm changing colors doesn't mean anything except it's going to give me an indication of what color of vinyl or cardstock or paper I need to load onto the mat. And it's also going to give me an idea of what my final image is going to look like. So let's slow down for a second. First of all, when you have got multiple layers, your colors tells Cricut Design Space how many mats it needs to load into your mat. So if we were to change all of this to the same color, right, which will not look good, <laughs> even though we have a lot of layers here on the side, because it's all pink, we're telling Cricut Design Space we only want to work with one color. And therefore, we're going to fit as many of these pieces onto one mat as we can fit. fit. So when I click on make it, I now have four mats because I had a really large image and Cricut Design Space has automatically arranged elements for me um, to try and help me save on space. So I've got my mat one here on the left. I can click on mat two to have a look at that mat three and mat four. But essentially, this is all pink elements. So if I made my design a lot smaller, I can cut all of my elements on one mat. All right, so now I've got my teddy bear all broken out. I only have to load one single mat with pink vinyl, cardstock, fabric, or whatever it is that you're working with, and I'm done. But of course, we don't really want to make this beautiful teddy bear just pink. So if I change it back, now I have got a lot of different colors going on and Cricut Design Space will sort and organize these according to color on different mats. So even though this black layer is quite far away from that black layer, because they are black, they're going to go on the same mat. So let's have a look and I'll show you what it means. So now we have seven mats in total. And we tell in Cricut Design Space, we would like to cut these wings from a gray sort of a color. So this needs to be cut by itself. We need to cut our black elements, the teddy bear, as well as the nose from um, a different mat, right? And it keeps going. So we've got our brown on here. We've got our brown elements on here. Um, yellow, pink. So even though there were a few different pink bits, it all fits onto one mat and then our red. So I hope that makes sense. Um, the colors here, the only reason it's colored according to those colors is because if I've chosen to make this red and I look at my screen to see what I need to do next and it's red, then I know what color I have to reach for. So I don't have to look at these elements, the little dress and the bows and go, oh, what color did I want to make those bits again? I can't remember because the screen is telling me you need to use red right now. All right, let's go back. So we can change these individual elements. So let's say I really would love to see what this little teddy bear is going to look like in a blue dress. I can click on the dress, right? If you're not sure what elements you've got, you've got this little eye and when you click on the eye, it's going to become invisible. 
and you can click on the eye and make it visible again so that you can see which bits you're working. So I'm working with this pink here down on the toes as well as the actual dress. So you can click on the dress here in the layers panel and up here you've now got a color box that's popping up. And all we have to do is to click on that box to pick a color. Now you'll automatically have your material colors up at the top. So if you want to keep in the same color range, you've got the ability to do that. And then we've got some basic colors underneath that. So I could quite easily pick a blue from here, right? And change it to that blue. I could change this red to a dark blue if I wish. So I have a quick look at what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the bottom layer there. So I could change that into a dark blue. I could change the belt. Make sure I've got the belt. I could change the belt into something else. Um, what do we want to? Let's see what purple looks like. Yeah, I don't know if I like purple. Dark purple, maybe. So you can really play with the colors to see what your new teddy bear will look like if you change some of these bits and these pieces, right? So you can individually go and change all of the bits. Now we actually have the ability to get a lot more fancy than just that. So if, for example, I wanted to change this dress to something else other than these colors here, we can do that by clicking on advanced. And now we have the ability to have the full range of blues to work with. We can click and drag to find a color that we really, really like. Or if you know a lot more about colors, you know that colors have this hashtag, right? We call that a hex code. And you can find a hex code on um, all sorts of different places. So often if I don't know what pink I like, I might put in a pretty pink hex code and then it brings up all of these different colors for me so that I can with my eye just have a quick look and say, oh wow, I really like, I think I like the pink up at the top. I really like this watermelon pink, it's perfect for me. So how do I make this pink on Cricut Design Space? I grab this hex code here, I copy it and now I can paste it into this box down here, whoops. Go. And now I have my watercolor that I absolutely love, but I didn't have to click around and drag around to try and find it. So there we go. I don't like the way that it looks now, but that's not the point. I just wanted to try and show you how colors work on Cricut Design Space. I hope that makes sense to you. So remember, colors when you're working with a cut here on the side, whoops, when you're working with cut, Colors are to show you what it's going to look like so that you can have a look at your image and you can go, whoa, that actually doesn't really work very well. I need to change the colors. This blue might be a little bit way too potent. I need to find something else that's a little bit more friendly than that, right? So you can make sure that your image looks good before you waste vinyl and cut vinyl that you won't want to use in the end. Secondly, you use colors because it tells Cricut Design Space which elements to put together on one single mat so that you can cut all of your elements from that color in one go. And thirdly, you can use colors if you do printable images. And printable images, right, if I flatten, and this is a completely different tutorial, if you don't know what I'm doing right now, you need to find the tutorial for this in your course. But if I go to flatten, I can change this into a printable image. So see how it now says print and cut. That's telling me that this image is going to be printed with a printer first before I cut it. And that's how we make stickers. So right now, these colors are important because this is actually what's going to be printed out on my printer. So in that case, it's important to make sure you have the exact right shades. But when I'm working with a cut image, I don't worry about trying to find the perfect shade. I just want to know, is a light pink going to look good with a dark pink? So I hope that makes sense. 
There's loads more tutorials that really digs deep into a lot of this stuff. This was only meant to be a super quick overview of colors. That was page 31 of your book. We have 88 different tutorials to go, so there's still heaps to learn. So if you are a little bit confused, don't worry about it too much just yet. Just keep going, hang in there, and you will 100% definitely understand everything by the end of this. All right, see you soon.